Welcome to the Focus Cast. Today on our guest episode, we've got Clay Goswick. A six-figure photographer on his way to... Seven figures. Oh, man, I'm so excited. We're going to hear how he changed his pricing strategy to pass six figures and what he plans to do to reach... Seven. <sighs> Let's go. Let's welcome our guest, Ooh. Clay Goswick. <laughs> I'm Jonathan Noel. And I'm Brian Noel. And I'm Clay Goswick. This is the Focus Cast. Where we drop focus guides for solopreneurs, founders with a seven figure goal. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Let's get focused as boys. <laughs> How much have you guys practiced that? <laughs> uh, 54 times. 54. Uh, nice. This is episode like 57. I don't know. It's pretty good. <laughs> No, we're only at 60 something. No, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> a few times. <laughs> oh, Clay, thanks for hanging out with us today. Absolutely. Thanks and your for having beautiful me. Self. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we got some questions for you. So, that way, uh, those in the audience who are listening in their car or in their house or whatever they're doing know who you are. That's scary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, we're just going to interrogate you. The you world ready? needs to know about the clay. Oh, man. The Georgia red clay <laughs> gossip. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you do? Uh, so I am a commercial and advertising photographer and uh, work with small to medium to large businesses and uh, photograph anything from a product to uh, a person or a scene that would sell a product. Nice. Wow. Business, there we go. Something like that. Yeah. I like that. Very concise. <laughs> mm. So hitting it off, when did you actually hit six figures in revenue? Uh, so probably... <laughs> Uh, it's funny because I stopped counting at one point. Um, hey, <laughs> there probably, we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably a few <laughs> years ago. Um, yeah, three or four years ago, give or take. Nice. So currently, who is your target customer? Uh, yeah, so kind of like what I was saying a second ago. It's, uh, I mean, I want to say small, but it's not small. It's it's medium to large companies. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, everybody kind of puts that in, in different categories or how you put those companies in different categories, but, um, right. Not Apple, but not businesses with three employees. Yeah. 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 So the IRS um, says, uh, <laughs> medium sized businesses, 500 employees or more. Yeah. So according to them, <laughs> <laughs> anyone, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, some, some, you know, large international brands and then, uh, a lot of medium size probably. Sweet. Yeah. So what problem exactly is your customer uh, trying to solve here? Uh, yeah, so it's, it, it can kind of be on, on, well, several different things, right? So for example, uh, last two days I've been working with a customer that their product costs anywhere from, you know, three to four grand and mm. all they have is renderings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Pretty crazy, right? So, um, <laughs> so basically you... it's, yeah, I'm coming in and, and shooting that. So it's a lot of times it's, uh, you know, companies like that or companies that need, you know, updated stuff or some kind of style to their current photography, right? I mean, there's... there's They've been milking the same old photos for 15 years. Yeah, I mean, you run into that and then, um, you know, a lot of times it's it's not the sexiest stuff. It's a lot of like catalog work, right? It's like uh, white background kind of stuff and, yeah. you know, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. that you send Amazon. Uh, oh, I don't yeah. share a lot of that, but, you know, there's a lot of money in that and every business needs that pretty much. Oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. POW. Yeah, products on white. There you go. <laughs> products on P POB. I remember <laughs> POW and P O M O W. Products on model on white. Uh, you just taught me something. <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> All right. Well, you just kind of talked a little bit about uh, how you solve these problems, but when you filled out the survey that we sent you, and we <laughs> asked the problem that your target customer is trying to solve, you said uh, being sold garbage. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what do you mean by that? Um, <laughs> Explain let, garbage. Yeah, well, <laughs> so you don't sell garbage. I try not to. Um, <laughs> I mean, I probably have at one point or another. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to name any names. Anyways, for I, sure. <laughs> so, uh, for example, um, this past last week or the week before, within the past couple weeks, I literally had a conversation with a client of mine that hired an agency and spent six figures on a photo shoot. And they showed me 
what they had to walk away with Oof. and my brain about exploded. Wow. Uh, that's one. And then literally within probably the same week, I had another client reach out and say, oh yeah, we just, we went out to this other state on a different coast and, uh, <laughs> and you know, hired whatever and we weren't thrilled about it. And I was, so I, I actually asked, can you send me the photos? Because if you don't like it, I want to see what you don't like. And yeah. they sent it to me and it, We'll just say the agency they hired, the product that they were given or the assets they were given did not line up with what was shown on their website. It was mm. pretty far off. So that's what I mean by garbage. Uh, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing. So I try not to do that. Have you ever seen Below Deck? No. It is a reality TV show. Uh, probably statistically speaking, 80% women watch it, but I watch it with my wife and I love it. <laughs> but I remember one episode where there was a chef who had on her portfolio these beautiful pictures of food. And then during one of the mills on a private yacht, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for three days to charter. Ooh. She put shredded cheese on chips and called it nachos and served the guest. To like billionaires. <laughs> yes. What's wrong with that? Needless to say. I'd eat that. She got fired. No, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't call it garbage, but uh yeah, you know. <laughs> Throw some yeah. caviar on there and then it's ready for uh billionaires. Some yeah. gold flake. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a good point, right though. So like in the agency environment, you pay for the person who sold the product, you pay for the account managers, the project managers, the admin team, uh, of course the leadership that makes a ton of money, and then by the end it by the end it all comes down to uh, a photographer that they hired that didn't do a good job. Exactly. I mean, it's it's yeah. literally like I, I work with agencies, right? So yeah. I'm sitting there going, someone just made bank to turn around and pay this photographer a couple grand. Yep. And actually probably less than that because I doubt it if they have that much experience. And, you know, That's I like don't a, mean that in a cocky way, but it's just sometimes it's like you got to call it for what it is. I yeah. Mean, That's like a photography hit and run. <laughs> I mean, really? It's like, like a smash and grab. You yeah. Just, yeah. You just get the cash and run, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, our conversation afterward was they're going to fire the agency. So it's like, I mean, that makes me cringe because I'm like, man, I could have done that for less than 10 grand and they're spending 10 times that much. You know, well, like it's crazy. Well, what's great is uh, if you charge 50 grand, you you're still, still giving them a great deal. Yeah, <laughs> charge uh, 99,000. <laughs> you know what? I'll give you 10% off. Yeah. And it'll be way better. Way better. There you go. Oh my gosh. Okay. So that's garbage. You mm -hmm. talked about how you solve these problems, right? So they're being sold garbage. Uh, but yeah. Okay. So we're going to get into a little bit of, you know, what makes a, a photo a good photo. We'll get to that in a second, but I'd love to know how long have you been shooting? Uh, so I start, well, you've known me for a long time. Yeah. Since back in the day. Back uh, in the day. Yeah. So I actually started shooting in high school. Uh, I love my dad, but my dad was known to buy things and not use them <laughs> <laughs> to put it politely they had a camera floating around yeah. exactly it was sitting up in the closet and um you know i was kind of interested in photography so i started taking it on you know trips out with the guys and mission trips with the church and whatever my uncle was actually a photographer uh so he he taught me a little bit uh and yeah just did that for a while and then you know helped with some weddings put it down for a while and then came back to it and said i think i want to make this a, a career and really put my head down and try to figure it out uh, for, for those of you, for those in the audience on YouTube watching, uh, Clay is a very handsome man and he may not look a day over 22. So when you say you started shooting in high school, how many years have you been shooting? How old are you? I'm 40. Oh gosh. <laughs> Well, I okay. I'm asking because uh, we met. I was in high school and we met. So, yeah. yeah so I'm thirty. Long. Yeah, I'm thirty one. So, yeah, I think. Yes. So thirty one. Twelve, fifteen years. Yeah, something like fifteen. That. Yeah, nice. it's crazy. Fifteen years shooting. Man, I'm having flashbacks. I'm meeting Brian Noel in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the collars, the collars and the shoes, man. <laughs> oh man. So fifteen years. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, you kind of mentioned it, you know, because there's different veins of photography, yeah. you know, the weddings and stuff, but you kind of already hit this, like, with your expertise. Uh, I mean, yeah, so we, we do some weddings. We have, a like, a side brand, if you will. A mm. lot of people don't know about it. Um, yeah. So we started doing the weddings. Hidden. Yeah, the hidden. But, we, I mean, we probably do six or seven at this point. That's not our bread yeah. and butter. It's kind of, it's honestly uh, just a little bit of a safety net and, like, 
I do enjoy shooting weddings, but at this point, it's probably 10 to 15% of our income. It's not. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I certainly don't advertise myself as that, but it's... Uh, but you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to shoot a wedding every weekend, but, you no. know, I, I enjoy one every now and then, and it's fun to switch it up and, you know, it's, I uh, think something different. I think based on your uh, quality and aesthetics... Uh, I think if someone asked you to do their wedding, your next question would be, let me see the uh, art direction for the wedding, and I'll tell you if I'll do this or not. <laughs> let, me, let me introduce you to my uh, art director, Brian Noel. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads into the next question. Where does the majority of your revenue come from as a photographer? Yeah, so I mean, that yeah, that goes yeah. back to commercial and advertising. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting because a lot of of advertising now is social media, so it's a lot of um, content that's quickly consumed. Which is good and bad. Uh, it's good in the sense that everyone needs it and needs a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, it's bad in the sense of it's very run and gun, and you can't, um, you know, spend three thousand dollars on five images because right. that doesn't make sense. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot of yeah. expectations, though, um, and you know that's always kind of a battle. And that, as you guys know, I mean that that changes trends change very fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's uh, anything from billboards to websites to um, social media. It's kind of all over the place. Which is pretty interesting, right? Um, you know, the way we consume media obviously has evolved, and um, you know, I would assume um, a beautiful image in a magazine. You know, people would keep magazines laying around for months, if not years. Yeah. And now it's you know, I mean, some of those ads you see. Uh, on Instagram or you know something like that, like they follow you, and it seems like for thirty days you see that image like <laughs> like ten thousand times. Yep, um, and, and then, then it's, it's gone. gone forever. Yeah. It's gone forever. Yeah, it's, it's gone. Like, yeah. What what happened to that fucking image? You know, it's like <laughs> like just in my brain, and then it's just gone. But yeah. yeah, the way we consume media, and then to your point, it's a it's a healthy balance between um, quality and the expectation of that. Yeah, that yeah. form of media. Well, it's turned, you know, the social media game is all like run and gun. I mean, honestly. So yeah. it's like, yeah. cool, you have uh, four hours and we need uh, enough content for a month or two. You know, <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's good and bad. It's just the nature of the beast and, you know, try to learn it the best I can and, and go with it and keep some level of quality there and not get total garbage. Right, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I was listening to a um, podcast or a. Uh, um, it was, uh, I don't know what it was. It was some conference and Kanye was talking and he said, um, um, bad taste is vulgar. And, uh, he was talking about how, uh, on his wedding day, he spent four days with the photographer getting the perfect image of his <laughs> family, of his wedding. Wow. So again, like, like to the <laughs> point of for, for creatives, especially someone like you who is creative and has high taste, like constantly like battling that reality of maintaining quality as well as within the expectations. Yeah. That sounds tough. Yeah. No, I mean, it, yeah, it, it really is because it's, it's, um, how do I say it? It's, it's, you know, you only have a certain amount of time generally for a shoot, right? So, yeah. so artists, I don't even want to call myself an artist, but creatives, right? We can, we want things to be good. And right, oftentimes of we, we lean towards perfection, but yeah, there's it's no, unrealistic a lot of times. Yeah. So there's a level of, I hate to say it, but there's a level of good enough or Compromise. we're 90% there keep going yeah you know um because you see guys get hung up all the time on stuff and they keep like wanting to play with it and play with it and play with it <laughs> yeah and you know i've i've um i've been on the flip side of that where i've had to work with with other creatives and and uh dps and stuff where i've had to direct them and they've been that personality mm. and i'm like all right i'm about to start cracking the whip <laughs> and i literally had a i was working with a, a friend of of hours and uh <laughs> we had a four-day shoot and he pulled me aside the the second day and he goes you have a different tone today <laughs> he's like uh, you're a little bit of a hard ass and i was like people aren't moving along we got shit to do <laughs> so, yeah. um so yeah. i was like i had to speak a different language because um it wasn't you know, working <laughs> people want to be perfectionist and i'm like uh you know an hour or two overtime translated to thousands of dollars and yeah. that's not in the budget so mm. it's a weird balance yeah yeah i mean i wish we could all be kanye and 
pay our photographers for four days of probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, maybe more. Just for one photo that you want to be perfect. That's one thing that he didn't say is how much that cost, but I'm sure it was a lot. Yeah, probably two fifty. Yeah, we should find that photographer. We should interview them. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so we kind of mentioned in the intro um, how you actually, what you changed structure-wise to hit that six-figure goal. So, yeah. like, or to hit start hitting six figures. So let's kind of hit on that a little bit. Was you, you didn't change really your output, but you kind of changed what? Pricing? Yeah, so, you know, it's funny. Me and Brian talked about this on the phone the other day. Um, and I love what you guys are doing because this is something, like, I'm still interested in now, but especially a few years ago, I was like, how do I make six figures? Like, that was my goal. <laughs> That's all I cared about, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, and honestly, I got to a point where I stopped caring, mm. which is, sorry, you can bleep that out. but uh, <laughs> No, it's great. No. Yeah, but, I, you know, it was, like, literally, we would sit down beginning of the year, and, and me and my wife that works with me, we would, you know, write goals out for the year, and it was like, make six figures, make six <laughs> figures. Like, every year, we'd never, we'd be, like, just shy of it, right? And, yeah. And, uh Finally, I was just like, I'm just not going to focus on it. I'm just going to like better my systems, better my pricing, price myself better because I realized I was probably wasting a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's travel days or, or uh, post-production time or whatever, mm -hmm. right? And then it was funny. I think we did our taxes one year, and I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess we did it. You know, that's, oh, yeah. right? but it's funny because you get there and you're like, this is what it's like to arrive, I guess. But then it's, you know. Well, we, oh. We've already talked about this so many times on so many episodes. <laughs> like, as cheesy and as lame and as, like, taking a piss in the bathroom or in a break room, <laughs> it is, like, it's not about the journey. Or it's not about it's the not, destination. It's about yeah. the journey. Like, yeah. Well, but, I mean, you know, you, you honed in on your systems. Yeah. You, know, you changed a couple things and you quit worrying about it. And that's when it happened. That's when you broke through. Well, and... Gosh, I absolutely love this, right? Because we talk about lead and lag measures, right? Six figures is a lag measure. Seven figures is a lag measure. Eight figures is a lag measure. And a lot of times we get so hung up on the lag measure, uh, we obsess over the lag measure. We forget the, the very specific uh, requirements within the lead measures. So you just named a couple lead measures really quick, but let's break those down. Mm -hmm. You said you started focusing on, you said time. Um, so like time efficiency as a photographer. So what does sure. that mean? Yeah. So have you guys ever heard of the, uh, I actually talked about this on another podcast, but, um, the four hour work week. Oh yeah. yeah. Brian yeah. mentions it Love every that. other episode. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I only work four hours a week and nice. I don't at all. <laughs> I wish I was like, I don't, I don't get that. But, um, I only work four hours a day before lunch and four <laughs> hours a day after lunch. <laughs> Works out great. Four hours a day after the kids go to bed. <laughs> Um, no, but so I, I listened, I didn't finish it, but I listened to, uh, part of his book on, on audible or whatever. And I was like, okay, I can't work four hours a week, unfortunately, in the industry I work in. However, I can take this and apply it to four hours a day. Right. And most days, I mean, I just came off of two really long days. So like it's not every day is four hours. Right. But I took that idea, said, all right, there's 52 weeks in a year. Uh, let's go ahead and knock two weeks off for holiday stuff, whatever, right? All right, to hit six figures, I need to make two grand a week, right? Tell me if my math is off. I was homeschooled. No, you, no you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Hold, I can't, I calculated 50 weeks. On that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, 50 so, weeks minus a couple, yeah. Yeah, so break that down, right? Um, so two grand a week. All right, I need at least one office day, and I'm probably not going to be shooting five days a week realistically, right? Right. So four days a week, $500 a day minimum there's your six figure mark, right? So um, I, I basically made a system. I actually made a little thing on my wall in my office uh, reminding me of like, hey, you're trying to book yourself for four hours, four days a week. Your minimum price point is going to be this. Now, mm. my day rate's not $500, but just, you know, someone wants a two hour shoot, cool, 500 bucks. That's, mm. or try, try to even base my minimum around that, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, there's weeks where, honestly, I mean, December was super slow. I probably had several weeks where I made nothing, and that's terrifying. But then you have weeks where you're making five, six grand in a week, and you know, it's, you yeah. kind of make up for that. So, anyways, to your point, it's I kind of uh, reverse engineered that a little bit, and was like, all right, here's here's kind of what I'm aiming to do, and this is going to get me to that goal, you know. Right. Instead um, of saying, I'm going to work enough hours to make it, you mm -hmm. broke down the math and said, actually, it's this much per day, which means I need to charge this much right. per yeah. session minimum. Yeah. And and it kind of, you know, if for example, if I had 
a day and a half of shooting, I could charge, uh, I don't know, for example, two grand for that, right? Whatever the project was, then that covers my week. I don't need to overbook myself that week. Yeah. And, and obviously, if I have time and I feel like taking more work, do right, it. Right, of course. You know, you have to judge everything, right? But, oh, yeah, um, if it's a great opportunity. Exactly. Sometimes you got to push through, like you said. If you have, a, You'll have a couple of weeks where you're working 10 hours a week. Yeah. You know, seven days. But right. if it's two amazing projects, then you can take whatever. Right, you exactly. Can, so. Exactly. No, you're, you're exactly right. So. I got a question. How many of the, hey, man, you know, this is going to be great. You know, only got 150 bucks. How much of that shit fell off once you started focusing on uh, the rate per day? Um, excuse me. Uh, so <laughs> you cut that out. Um, uh, yes. Or, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, they don't exist anymore. Yeah, well, it's funny. You actually told me we had lunch one time or breakfast or something. And uh, this was like when I was really trying to start my business. And it took me years to figure this out. You're like, Clay, you need to be able to say no. I was like, why would I say no to anyone? Like, <laughs> I need to take all the money that's out there. Any job I can. Um, but I finally, later on, that settled in. Um yeah, I, I think a lot of it falls off because it's like, you know, you really start thinking, what's my minimum, right? So even if you're going to go out and shoot something that might be an hour and a half, that's still your day. The likelihood of booking something else that day yeah. is pretty slim. And even yeah, if you exactly. do, your brain <laughs> capacity, because you got to think travel time, you got to go pick up your equipment and yep. get all that ready. And then, you know, so it's funny, sometimes like a two hour shoot can literally take a good chunk of the day. Oh, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. yeah. And people Plus don't the, realize that. All yeah. the post shit. You know? Yeah, and you gotta you gotta factor in post production and, and all that. Right. And know. people's minds they think, oh, two hours. Right. You know, that's all I'm paying for. Not driving forty five minutes or an hour there, driving back home, mm -hmm. finding a unloading, fucking parking spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unloading the footage <laughs> and then uh footage or whatever, whatever you have, yeah. and then processing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's like they just think it appears, you know. Like, yeah. Like you take the picture and it's done. Yeah. You know, it's edited. It's it's what we actually uh we had a wedding one time, and you're going to cut this part out, right? No. Okay, cool. We don't cut anything. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm going to change my address. Um, <laughs> no, we actually had a w uh, wedding one time, and the couple was, like, trying to calculate our actual shooting time during the day. I was like, um, that's On their not, wedding? It was, it was weird, I wonder man. if you're still married. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no way. It, it got weird real okay, quick. Okay, so that goes back to another really good question. Yeah. Like, um you know, the, the toxic clients, right? And this applies to uh, seven, eight-figure businesses, right? I mean, I think one of the biggest opportunities to scale is to get rid of toxic mm -hmm. clients, yeah. customers, oh, yeah. right? Regardless if you sell a product or service. But again, like like thinking back, the, the, this image isn't good enough. I need you to re-edit it. I need you to do more post work, all that kind of stuff. Like how did that evolve from you know, your mentality of six figures and take whatever you can get and working 80 hours a week to this is my base. This is who I work with. Like, how did that, how did that evolve? I'm, sure. I'm assuming it got better. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <I'm assuming. laughs> no, I actually, uh, I hit a point, uh, probably a few years ago. I was literally so freaking stressed out and I, I started questioning like the, like, what am I doing? Like, this is not why I work for myself. Cause yeah. I just, yeah. I had, uh, had some weird experiences and I was uh, really stressed out, I'll we'll just say. And and I, I basically, I didn't have boundaries in place and I didn't, yeah. I, I wasn't in control of the uh, the shoots and the scenario. And yeah, uh, I basically, and this is stupid on my part, I put myself in a position where people felt like they could control me mm. and that's dangerous. And obviously, you know, you, you want to make your client happy. You want to, you want to serve the client. You want them to be happy with the final product, but at the same time, people will run over you and oh, they don't no always intentionally try to, they don't, they don't know they're doing it half the time. Um, yeah. so yeah. yeah, I mean, a lot of that is, is scope of work. Uh, you know, really asking a lot of questions. It's funny because I get this all the time, right? Someone hits me up and say, Hey Clay, uh, I just, I just need some photos. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, That's wow. like going to a doctor. Hey, I need health. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, uh, seriously. What the fuck? <laughs> is it, like, is okay. it your knee or take your out, heart? Or? Yeah. Take out your phone, put it on, you know, reverse the camera. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Um, you know, people go, I just need photos. Okay. Of what? Uh, this product. Oh, where is it going to go? <laughs> What's it for? Do you have a budget? Like what, like who's your market? You know, all these basic questions. So I've, I've really learned 
ask more and more questions up front. And you'd be yeah. surprised some people cannot answer those questions. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> but that's a red flag, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, for oh, sure it's yeah. a red flag. Because yeah. then they don't know what they need. They don't know what they need. There's no set expectations. I'm going, oh, this looks cool. I'll go shoot this. Yeah. And, you know, it's hard because sometimes it's like, well, it's money on the table. I should do it. But it's like, I, I don't know what I'm aiming for. Yeah. And that and that sounds yeah. simple in itself, but I don't know. I'm kind of dumb and stubborn sometimes. But <laughs> that kind of took me a while to, to get, you yeah, know. I think this is just a, a like a classic solopreneur, entrepreneur, growing pains kind totally. of thing where you yeah. have to learn to say no because yeah. it, when you want to work hard, when you want to hustle, you re- do feel like you're leaving money on the table. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, well, and it's, it's, um, it moves up too. I remember consulting a company that was around four to five million dollars in revenue. And, you know, obviously they wanted to get the next point, which was about seven to eight for them. And, you know, one thing that we did is we looked through all the projects that they worked on. And, uh, there was a lot of like, I mean, this is, this is a service based business, uh, around that $45 million. Their sweet spot project was 350 to $500,000 in service fees. And, um, and they were taking on projects that were like fifteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and mm. the the problem is you become so systematic at the three hundred thousand dollar level that you apply that same level of admin to the ten thousand dollar, and it just becomes extremely inefficient. Mm. And and we all think that that ten thousand dollars is going to lead to five hundred thousand dollars, but mm, you know, oftentimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. You sure. Know? So you got to be pretty careful there and know that. But um, but again, so I think um, just understanding uh you know, what you're going into. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's funny. I, um, oh man, I like not to tell too many stories, but no, to kind of play off of that. Like I've had, I had this guy, I got an intro from another guy I knew. And I think I actually met him on Facebook marketplace years ago. It was really funny, but we kind of stayed in touch and he referred me to this company to work for, uh, the company has been around for over a hundred years. Right. And they got this, the president of marketing, whatever guy talked to him and, um, He's like, yeah, just we need a video for this. I'm like, all right, cool. So I kept asking questions, and I'm like, I need send me some kind of example of what you want. Yeah, I finally get it. And you know, obviously, we had conversations around what it would look like. It's a 15 minute slideshow <laughs> of photos and drawings. <laughs> I did yeah. not watch all 15 minutes. I just. <laughs> I had a couple points in it. I was like, all right, it's 15 minutes of a slideshow. Unless you're serving alcohol, no oh, one's going to watch a 15-minute slideshow. 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but what was funny is, if, I guess what I'm getting at, he he didn't know what he wanted. Yeah. yeah it was our conversation. He said it's a 100-year-old company, and they're still living 80 years ago where they're doing 15-minute <laughs> slideshows. Right. And he kept asking me for numbers, and I kept asking questions. I'm like, we, we don't know what we're aiming for. Yeah. And I finally, I literally just, I should have cut it off, but I just pulled a number out of my butt. I was just like, based on what I see in my head, <laughs> yeah. this is like a simple version of what we're explaining. I'm not doing a slideshow for you. Here's a number. Never emailed me back, ever. Yeah. Like, ghosted me at that point. I was like, okay. That was like, a win-win for you. Oh, yeah, no, it's all, I, I didn't it, need to take that project, but yeah, it's, it's just that, an example, you know? Oh, yeah. If, if you're going to deal with a nightmare like that, you got to throw out an outrageous number. Yeah. You know? Well, this the scary thing is that I was I didn't do that. I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty nice on the number. <laughs> wow. Because I was actually like, well, maybe we can actually get you something. They probably wanted to pay like 200 bucks. No. It, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we're so, going to help out this young kid. We're going to give him a couple of hundreds, and it's going to be great. <laughs> So anyway. We're gonna we're gonna talk about photography in a second, but I got one sure. question for you. Just Uh-oh. not a toot my own horn. Uh-oh. But how many times have I hired you in the past fifteen years? Brian Noel is very responsible for my oh, success. No. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. That's not it. Yeah, because I've never had super big budgets like right, what right. I what I would love to pay you, but I probably hired you what five, eight times, maybe. Yeah, for decent amount. Projects. Yeah, yeah. How many times have I asked for revisions? I don't think ever. Ever. Very easy. Yeah. Never. Never. Because last time you did you did um <laughs> you did a shoot with both of us, Brian yeah. and I. We looked at him and we were like, Okay, this is like holy shit. I looked like, at that photo and said, That is the most sexiest version of myself that I've ever had. <laughs> and it that, was all that clay. shoot was fun though. That it was, was all clay. Oh no. Oh, you've was... done you've done family photos, not that you do that full time, but you do that for friends, but uh you've yeah. done some family photos and uh and you've always done a great job with that. But thanks, man. Yeah. No, that shoot was fun though. I mean but but to to add on to your point you guys probably had healthy expectations. So I sent you a, ga- a gallery of, of uh, I don't know, 30, 40 images maybe, right? Yeah. 
you know in your head, not all these are supposed to be home runs. You're going to take a handful, right. and that's your staples, and that's yep. what you're going to use. Exactly. Not everybody gets that, you know. Yeah. So they expect everything to look magazine ready. <laughs> they want like 200 bangers out of a. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's it's setting those expectations. Obviously, you guys have been in the creative space. You are in the creative space. So yeah. You, yeah. You know what you're looking for. But yeah. How many? Uh, this is sorry. One no. last question yeah. for. <laughs> hey, we're going. How many people? Blame it on their photography, but it's really the fact that they're just their not website, pretty. Their website's like, oh, <laughs> just they not. don't look good. <laughs> their website doesn't look good. It's like a CEO of a company, you know, he's like 50, and he's like, everyone praises him and, <laughs> and like kisses his ass, and he takes these photos. He's like, I don't look good. You, these photos are bad. It's like, like the photographer mm, sucks. It's like, mm. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of ways to look at that. Um, yeah, headshots are tough, man. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, no I won't. Doubt. I won't crack that can. <laughs> you get a lot of thoughts on that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is a funny thought. <laughs> the list of edits I have received in the past. Oh <laughs> man. Pretty, pretty mind blowing. <laughs> well, we've got Clay here, so yeah. we got to ask. I want to know. Uh oh. What makes a good photographer? Oh. Oh man. That's, I bet that's hard for a photographer to answer. I guess there's so many avenues too. But we wanna, we want to know. <laughs> yeah. We want to know. There's a lot of photographers and there's a lot of people who hire photographers. So yeah. what makes a good one? Um you might laugh at this, right? So there's a lot of things, right? Obviously you have to be decent at the craft. 100%. <laughs> However, and I I actually tell um wedding clients this when we sit down with them and they're kind of shopping around, they haven't settled on on anyone. I actually tell them I'm like, "Hey, Make sure I know you're shopping around. Sit down with your photographer, whoever you're talking to. Do you like them as a person? Would you go get a drink with them? Would you go get coffee or lunch, mm. right? And I say it's a little bit different, but to my point, right? Right. You're going to see them more than you're going to see your, your spouse that day. Oh, wow. And they're following you around with a camera, and they're telling you what to do all day, so make sure you like them. I think that applies to commercial photography, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if mm. you... Plus... Like you're saying, if you like the photographer, they're actually going to care more too. Or if you like the people, yeah. Obviously, if you yeah. like the if you like the person or the brand, yeah. Yada yada yada. Apply whatever you want. Yeah. You're going to take a little extra care in your product. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. So, mm. so it's it's honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to personal relationship. Being yeah. a good hang. I mean, I do a lot of stupid stuff on set. I know I've said a lot of things and done a lot of you know, whatever, but um. <laughs> But I love it on but every stopped your, it hasn't we've stopped ever your workflow. Like so. yeah. you never have a shirt on. It's one of my favorite it's qualities. Fair, well, I just bought this at Goodwill down the street. <laughs> so you haven't seen my lower half yet. Have you? <laughs> um, yeah. So, but but I think like yeah, you you have to be good to some degree at what you do. Um, but then I think um, <laughs> I always want to get this wrong. Uh, you under promise w- and over deliver. Oh, you I always, always want to get it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my way. Um, over deliver. Under over promise. Over promise. Under deliver. <laughs> I always want to say it backwards. That's the, that's the um, government method. Is to- <laughs> <laughs> so IRS, listen to this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's like you know, you see a lot of people in, in the creative industry, and in, in you know, coming from music, and even like when we used to kind of run together and, and do stuff, it's like you see these guys that are incredibly talented at what they do, whether it's you know, playing guitar, or taking photos, designers, whatever, right? But their attitude is shit. Their attitude is, is garbage. Yes. Or they can't show up on time and know what the heck they're actually supposed to be there for. Yeah. I mean, I showed up early today thinking we were doing, but that's, you know, whatever. It's better hour, being hour, late. Hour, hour, early. <laughs> hour early. It was great. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, there's a lot of factors other than just being good at what you do. Because you can be yeah. the best photographer in the world, but if you can't show up on time, keep a schedule, have a... a, a workflow deliver on deadlines be a good hang on set well especially no one wants to be around you if you're shooting someone and in that moment you want them to be comfortable and you're a you're you're a personality in which someone can't be comfortable like yeah all you're gonna do is get someone's photo of them uncomfortable yeah no i mean you're you're 100 percent right it's it's funny because i i wonder if my clients get nervous sometimes because I mean, you've known me for a long time. I'm a yeah. very laid back individual, right? Yeah. And so I'll tell people, like, listen, I'm laid back when I work. I'm not a high stress person. I can work in stressful environments, but my personality is not that. And right. generally, I react to stress with, let's everybody chill, let's get crap done, but we're good. And it's funny, I'll hear from clients sometimes, like, man, 
I didn't realize you got all that stuff in that shoot. Like, you know, because it's just so <laughs> it's chill. It's so chill. They, didn't, they, they stopped paying attention. Yeah, and that's how I, I kind of want it to be on set. Yeah. I don't mm. want... It shouldn't have to be stressful. I don't... We're taking pretty pictures. Life is short. <laughs> we're going to be dead soon. It's like, true. Like, just calm the fuck down. <laughs> PSA. <laughs> Seriously. It pisses me off. People are just ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So uh, personality makes a good... Obviously, yeah. skill. But yeah, yeah. behind the skill is incredible personality. I think everyone... I think that's good. Everyone would rather work someone who's pretty good, who has a great attitude, than the amazing person who is dog shit to work with. Yeah. 100%. It's just, it's just, yeah. it, it just applies to everything in life. Yep. Yeah. You know, I agree. You don't, you don't have to be the top 1%. Yeah. 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 Skill-wise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I agree with that. Yeah. And I'm not saying, you know, there, I'm not there's not saying totally yeah, like you said <laughs> charge someone $150,000 some business scam them, take some horrible photos and dip. Yeah. Yeah, not that. But it's um <laughs> yeah. And I mean there's there's people way way better than me. I am far from the best photographer out there, you know, and hopefully I keep getting better and I, I strive to, but um I always just like, man, be a good hang and treat people good. Yeah. You know? And hopefully I do that try to, but you know, yeah. I think that'll get you far. No doubt. Yeah. So on your, uh, remember when uh, creatives had on their uh, online portfolios like my Photoshop five stars, my Illustrator four stars. So you would have like photography. You would probably self-rate yourself like what a three and a half. Even though I'd give you a five. <laughs> uh, but then like your hang skills, like you should put that. My hang skills. Six. Five, six, stars. Yeah, six, <laughs> six stars. It, it would be five stars with like you know like a dancing emoji. Yeah, yeah. I should do that. Does LinkedIn allow that? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> My LinkedIn's like six years outdated right now. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about focus in a second. But my last question around photography is: uh, we talked about what makes a good photographer. So let's talk about what makes a good photo. Oof. Okay, so. Here's here's my theory. Ready? I think chefs are rock stars, right? Yeah. Like I literally, I love chefs. Like I, I don't know. If I had a, yeah. I, I could probably never be a chef, but um, in my dreams, I am. Um, <laughs> so I always tell people, you could have average Joe over here. You could give him a sirloin, whatever cut, and some olive oil and salt, whatever, right? He might grill it okay, but you can give a five-star chef that, and he's going to blow your mind with it, right? So, you know, what what makes a good photo? There's a lot of things that go into it, right? And everyone's like, oh, the camera, man, you got a good camera. It, just, it takes good photo. Like, I got to get one of those. And it's right. like, I have people ask me all the time, what what camera should I get? I want to get into it. I'm like, it does not matter. Right. If you're, mm. it's literally if you're a, a tool. chef, just because you have a better stove doesn't mean the food's going to taste better. Yeah, and you cook, so you, I mean, you understand oh. this. You start learning techniques, and yeah. you learn how to taste things. and It's what you can do with what you've got in the environment. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. When I was a teenager, uh, I remember getting a couple extra guitar pedals, and Dad was like, you know, if you just keep getting guitar pedals, you're not really improving your skill. You're just changing <laughs> the sound of the skill you have. And I was like... Damn, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking right, man. Dang it. But it's a good point, right? Yeah. Obsessing over the tools instead of perfecting the craft. Yeah. Same thing as a chef. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can you take what you have in the environment right now and make something great? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Well, and there's a lot of finesse in photography, right? So it's like even lighting. Like my lighting, I have is not that. Fa it's pretty basic, but it's like spend spend time with it and learn it and yeah. know and people don't they're not going to know looking like oh i used a five thousand dollar light versus a five hundred dollar light like people don't you can't tell and half the time that's you know true of the camera too but so yeah th there's a lot of things i mean f people don't realize there's there's a lot of technique in photography and a lot of it is just training your eye right so we just came off a two-day shoot and um you know we would walk into a some of the shots we were doing were in businesses and stuff and I'll just walk in. I'll just stand there. And people probably think I'm stoned. or so, I, I don't know. Like, who knows, right? Sometimes I, I get self-conscious. I'm like, are my clients sitting there with their arms crossed being like, here we are, this guy. <laughs> but I'll literally, I'll just sit there and look at the environment. And something I've learned over time is, you know, I used to get excited, and especially in front of clients, and you feel like, I got, I got to be taking pictures. I guess I got to shoot. And you just shoot, and you don't, you're making adjustments, but you don't really know what you're doing. Mm. So I've tried to reverse that. And instead of just getting trigger happy, 
walking into a scenario and taking my time dissecting it and just mm. studying it because photography is really just training your eye and knowing yeah. what to see right so so now instead of a thousand pictures where you take 20 yeah exactly you might have 200 pictures right where you right. take you know the same you get the same you might even yield more yeah because you've planned it out yeah which probably reduces your admin time oh, and your sure. customer satisfaction which uh, speaks to increase in revenue there you go and my wife likes me better because she uh, edits a lot of my stuff. <laughs> 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 better nice. sex. <laughs> Less edits, more time for sex. Nah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so to answer your, your original question, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that go into a photo, right? I mean, the, yeah, the angle, the lighting, uh, the treatment, you know, I mean, the, like I could sit here and give you a two-hour lecture on it, but... Um, yeah, it's just, I think it ultimately comes down to, like, here's a scenario. How are you going to break it down? How Even if you're shooting natural light, like, there's a million ways to do that, you know? So uh, I don't really have a straightforward answer. No, I'm no, really you, not even answering your question right now, but, no, you, you know, it's... You answered it. Yeah. Be good enough to take less photos and have, you yeah. know, use the environment. I, yeah. I would tell most, m- most photographers this, that just instead of walking into a scenario and just shooting away take a second and just look like yeah. just yeah. study the scene whether mm. you're in a controlled environment or you know walking into your local coffee shop and shooting bagels for them or whatever yeah <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah so yeah, what do you see yeah mm, that's good i like it before you capture what do you see yeah. and then you'll know what to capture you have to immerse yourself in the environment yeah yeah i become think become the environment now we turn into a philosophical <laughs> thing <laughs> that'd be a great book it must be one of the yeah. surroundings. The <laughs> okay, sweet. Focus. What questions yeah. do we have for him, bro? Oh, gosh. Focus. Are we focused? You guys are focused. Yeah. You got to get me focused when I came in here. <laughs> <laughs> we took a little focus whiskey. Not whiskey. Is that what that was? Focus brandy. Yeah, brandy. I still don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> took a shot of focus brandy. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should so- come up with our own vodka called Focus. Focus. Huh. Focus vodka. I know some people. <laughs> Can I get in on this? <laughs> sure. Why not? I got his seven figures. We're going to need we're going to need beautiful beautiful absolutely amazing product photography. So. There we go. I like it. Luckily we know a person. <laughs> <laughs> Do you oh. like him? <laughs> <laughs> the vibe's so chill with Clay, man. I don't worry about anything. He always shows up naked. How weird. <laughs> Doesn't bother me. <laughs> what is the Clay Goswick Goswick do? Like, what areas do you struggle with, actually? We'll yeah. start with that. Yeah, where do you struggle on focus? Um, so we, I'm being honest, uh, so we just had a kid almost a year ago, and we have a home office, and then we have a, a small product studio, which is basically an office outside of our home. My struggle right now, <laughs> if you can guess, <laughs> is uh, so my wife works with me, so basically, you know, we do the, the swap with the kiddo. We have yeah. kind of scheduled times throughout the day where I take the kid she takes the kid so the other person can work that's a little bit of a struggle right now especially uh running into busy season so yeah. trying to figure that out um yeah. then honestly like social media man oh yeah. yeah this is the right this is what everyone hates right we have two episodes for you one on time blocking and one on uh delegation all right I, i'm gonna listen to that <laughs> uh but it's a struggle yeah yep. it's a struggle i mean it's good and bad right it's uh so I, I have a rule. I don't follow this. <sighs> I'm so bad at this. Um, so I, I basically try not to look at social media till lunchtime or after. right? Because yeah. for me, what I've learned is my most productive time of the day is in the morning. I just no I doubt. get in the zone. Yeah. I've really become a morning person. I love it. So if I can help it, I really try not to you know, get Smart. on it if I can. Because it's just, it, it's weird, man. Like, I don't know what it is. I want to see like some studies on this, but it, it puts me in a weird headspace. Is oh. it like that for you guys? Oh, when you like just start consuming social media. Yeah, like like uh, seven a.m. You're like, you know, had your coffee, doing the morning, the morning dump action, whatever it is, right? Yeah, you're it still there the scrolling. Yeah, it's it's weird. Like it just 
Well, I mean, you can you can wake up, meditate, and focus on your craft, or you can wake up, meditate, and focus on uh, the end of the world, uh, the recession that's happening, how the government's trying to take over our lives, how uh, we're terrible human beings, and how we probably fucked up something today. So it's just, what do you want to focus on today? Yeah. No, you're... Yeah. I mean, <laughs> once you... <laughs> that's a good way to put it. What do you want to do? <laughs> so nice. We've talked about the, what is it, the feedback loop? Like, if, yes. you, start, if you start looking at anything negative, and mm. then that you become like the algorithm recognizes that and that's what you engage in you're just gonna yeah. get more of that so yeah. yeah social media can really quick end up yeah. being a bunch of bullshit that just makes you feel horrible yeah well yeah. and i think we saw that in in 2020 right covid yeah. stuff but then you know all the riots and whatever right and yeah obviously we're hearing these messages you know kind of two sides or two different messages right and both are pretty exaggerated in my opinion um, oh, and it's yeah. just noise. Like, I, I, yeah. man, I remember telling my wife, I was like, I'm so sick of all the noise. I just said, screw it. Uh, I'm not watching the news anymore. I think I really put some distance between me and social media. And, I was and you felt like, better. Yeah. yeah. And I'm no like, doubt. if anything important happens, I will hear about it. And actually, uh, the four hour work week talks about that. Yeah. He's like, don't watch the news. Like he's yeah. straight up, you know, he's like, if something important happens, you will hear about it. And then you can go look it up. Yeah. So yeah, I don't watch the news. Good for you. <laughs> I bet, anyone? I bet you're a super Zen Jonathan is zen. one of the most zen, zen den people I've ever met. Yeah, and he's always like super chill, man. Oh. I'm trying. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. When we talk about the inner narrative and the monkey brain just just, just t -t 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 all day, he's like, ah, it's not as bad for me. It's very bad for me. We talk about uh, we we talk about all those things. Brian and I are we're good. Fundamentally different in a lot of ways. <laughs> yeah, even though we're brothers. Uh, <laughs> mentally, which is pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Well, it's great for this because we get to talk about different shit. There you go. Yeah. No, I love that and I think that's really important. Um, yeah. And uh, so if we look at uh, well, we talked about struggles, but you said so that was a struggle and that's something that you've started putting some habits in place uh, to kind of to kind of navigate that struggle and focus on being a dad, being a husband and being a photographer, being sure. a business owner. Um, yeah. So you put, uh, when we asked what systems habits do you maintain to stay focused, you said three, and I um, uh, exercised the first one, which we talk about. Yeah. I think it's funny, me and Jonathan joke, like every episode there's a problem we present, you know, whether it's, a you know, like in the head, like, you know, something you're yeah. struggling with mentally, your inner voice, your inner critic, uh, uh, imposter syndrome, and, and the end result is always like exercise, meditate, and stop consuming negative social <laughs> media. <laughs> social mm. media. And um, but again, it's just uh, it, so many things happen in the brain mm. when we uh, are physical, when we're when so we many exercise. Good things, yeah. So many good things, and I guess in a in a postmodern society where uh, most of what we do is in front of a machine, we yeah. just have to constantly remind ourselves we're we're not having to walk six miles to get water for the family. Right. No. So anyway, um, but the second one I wanted to ask about: you have to have an outlet. What does that mean? So. For me, if you were to ask my wife this, <laughs> she would say I have a lot of outlets. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think people get burned out for multiple reasons, right? And I've been burned out on stuff before that I thought I was passionate about and I thought I would do for the rest of my life. But um, you have to have an outlet. You can't, if you're a photographer, you can't be photographer mode 100% yeah. of the time. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't think it's healthy. And I, I think, yeah. uh, you know, I'm all for hustling and working hard, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, we're not trying to drive ourselves into the ground. And I feel like I see this in small business owners, especially, man. Yeah. And entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, whatever. And so, um, you know, I got into this for, I mean, I wanted to be a long-term thing. Um, yeah. And so I was like, man, I got to have an outlet. And so, you know, as far as exercise, like, got into cycling years ago, and it was just something very different than taking pictures. Um, and you know, I kind of, I got into like hunting this past year. Like I grew up around it, but I never like really got into it. And, uh, a couple of my close friends are really into it. So I said, screw it. You're out in the woods shooting things. Very quiet. It's very quiet. It's, well, very it's like, it's one shot, but it's like three hours of complete quiet. Yeah. It's very meditative. You can't even talk. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> crazy, but it's, you know, it's very different versus sitting in front of a computer in and in a studio with lights and camera. It's like the, the complete opposite. Yeah. So. It's, it's like no stimulation. Yeah. You're yeah. just, you're just listening mm -hmm. yeah. to the natural sounds. Yeah. And I mean, cycling's like that too. You know, it's kind of, yeah. it's a very repetitive, mm. monotonous Sport, what's, you know. what's great about cycling is you have to focus on not hitting trees and that turns off the rest of the stuff yeah 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 because if you do get caught up on your day when you're riding that's when you 
eat shit, you know? Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> Yeah. Then I couldn't hold a camera and I had a wedding the next day. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, I think outlets are important. Um, it just yeah. kind of cleanses the brain a little bit. Gives you a fresh perspective when you come back to it. Mm. Like I want to want to come back to photography the next day. I don't want to dread my job the next day. So yeah. part, I mean, really oh, that's good. in life, part your outlet is part of work because you have to do it Yeah. or else your work suffers. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with the yeah. exercise. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It's kind of like, it's weird. It's kind of like life is like a web of things. <laughs> no and they all balance each other out. <laughs> and when they're out of balance, life is not good. <laughs> yeah. So another focus habit you put here, I think this is a little bit more practical, but you said allowing buffer time. What does that mean? Yeah, so I, um, a big uh, fault of mine is not allowing buffer time, right? Mm. Or margin in my schedule. So um, I was really, really good for a long time about, I think I, well, I think I believe the lie of the more I can put in my day, the more successful I am, which is, ooh. Mm, that's the quote of the episode right there. That's right. There it is. Um, but I mean, you know this, that's not always true. You can be busy, yeah. but not productive oh, or yeah. successful. Busyness is a form of laziness. It's one of my favorite quotes. Mm, I like that. I'm going to take that. Next tattoo. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Upper thigh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I used to just cram my day full of stuff. And I was like, cool. This ends at 12 o'clock. I have a 30-minute drive. And I'm going to get there at 1230. Well, guess what? That ran 30 minutes over. Now I'm calling this person and I'm scrambling. And then I forgot a piece of gear because I was already in a rush. Whatever. So this kind of goes back to... Uh, reverse engineering, yeah. you know, how in your pricing and, you know, how to hit that six figure mark. Right. So, um, I really just started, I started trying not to double book myself for days. Like yeah. even if it's a two hour shoot, cool. That's the day. So make that two hours worthwhile for the day instead of like, well, I could do like three of these in one day and make, you know, yeah. whatever. I have a minimum. You're not going to leave the house for, you know, so uh, I like to think I've gotten better at it over time, but a lot of times it means saying no to people, you yeah. know, because people yeah. hit you up and, and they say, hey, I want, I need photos uh, this week. Well, I'm booked out a month or two, so they might have to go somewhere else. But, you know, it's funny, a lot of times I've learned saying no, I'm I'm booked up instead of like stressing myself out trying to fit in everything. People oftentimes are willing to work with you. It's oh, very no rare that they're actually on that kind of time crunch, you know. Yeah. Um, and if they go somewhere else, it's fine. You know, yeah. just shoot straight with them because I, I would rather someone shoot straight with me instead of squeeze me in than be stressed out and not do a good job. So, um, yeah, I enjoy my job a lot better when I'm not uh, cramped too tight. <laughs> so I love this. So you work less and make more. That's the thought. Yeah, that's the idea. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got time for one more question. This will be on record the longest episode that the Focus Cast has ever had. Yeah, we just started going for it. Uh, what, Clay, is your number one personal goal for the next three to six months? You know, I thought about this. Um, confession, I've kind of got away from uh, yearly goals. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually tried to adopt the idea of quarterly goals. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I'm still experimenting. I'm, I'm, I'm figuring yeah, out yeah, what yeah. this looks like. So oftentimes, especially right January, beginning of the year, people go, my goal for this year. Well... Great, you set a goal in January, but by October, you could be in a totally different place. Yeah. Uh, yep. And so then you just cancel that goal out versus going, well, this is the direction I want to go. Yeah. So for the next um, three months, I'm going to focus on this and then reevaluate. Yeah, course correct if you have to. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm still kind of figuring that out. This year has hit pretty hard, and we have a lot of projects going. So right What's now, your quarterly kinda, goal? I don't have that yet. I'm still trying to figure that out for this quarter. So uh, you're it's, spending uh, your first quarter figuring out your next quarter legal. Yes, and then <laughs> that quarter it'll be uh, the next. Yeah. So uh, you know, we have some goals that have taken us years to hit that we try to hit within a year, and we're just now hitting some of those. So um, I think getting more into those because a little bit of a process. I think we're we're probably like for example doing editorial work so we're finally getting in with some magazines that we've been trying to get into for nice. years yeah Congratulations. so thank you um so i think we're going to explore that but we haven't really set that um mm. up yet exactly what that looks like so yeah. we're kind of we're still in the process of it so I'm, I'm learning a lot right now i got one little quick tip there hit me so someone said who was smart in my past 
they would go do this big campaign for a company. And once they were done with that, this was an agency, they would just go to all the competitors in the space and say, well, I just did it for them, so you're behind, so you probably want us to do it for you too. <laughs> so when you get that first editorial back, wow, you just nice. take a picture of the editorial and send it to every single magazine ever and just say, this is what we do. There you go. That's smart. Yeah. That I mean, that. it wasn't me. <laughs> so there's this podcast I was on last week. Yeah. Um, what was that, it called? Uh, it was, uh, what's that guy's name? Tim Ferriss show. He, uh, you were on the Tim Ferriss show? Yeah, he got some cool <laughs> photos. <then. laughs> it's been a lot of money. So you guys, uh, you're a little behind. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way behind him. Way that dude's behind. a freaking rock star. Dude, it's nuts, man. I love his he, stuff. So I, I remember listening. Um, he has the Titans book. He has a four-hour work week. I've listened to his podcast. He's a, he's a, he's definitely an idol. But um, he talked about um, he used he he's journaled like his entire life to detail every single day. And he was talking on this one episode that I was listening to and he said he could go back to his 20s and uh, the way he felt at a certain time period of his life, look at his journal, see exactly what he was consuming and all of his habits, his sleep habits. And so that way he knew if he wanted to feel that way again, he would repeat that. Yeah. There's well, a, there's I'm, a reason certain people are extremely successful. I'm, t- and I'm 32 years <laughs> late to start the journal. <laughs> And you, you look at someone like him and you're just like, yeah, I mean, he should be successful. Yeah. Dude's a fucking rock star. And whatever successful means, but he's definitely yeah. a definitely a leader. But anyway, it's funny that you brought him up. He's a cool guy. Yeah, he's super cool. Or I'd like to meet him. I don't know if he's cool in person. But you should get him on your cool podcast. Guy. Hey, that'd be great. One day. Yeah. I'm One gonna, day. Goals, man. Yeah. This quarter. Three months. Let's go. <laughs> this quarter in 2026. 20, yep. <laughs> our our, uh, our uh, quarterly goal this year is delegation. So we can focus on the thing, uh, which is actually this moment right here. Yep. Um, and then increase output. Because uh, we learned on an episode that if uh, you want to start generating enough following on social, whatever that may be, typically, uh, specifically YouTube in this example, you have to have 1,500 pieces of content. And just based on the history of all content contributors and all those kind of things, once you hit 1,500 pieces of content on YouTube, that's when you're going to have mm. the, the, the following to generate revenue. So, So our goals are... Not 1,500 pieces of content in this quarter, but how do we create the system to get to 1,500 pieces of content faster? Yeah. And so that means delegate. Sure enough. Smart. Have to, man. Yeah. Oh, and uh, the other goal was to what? lift the forerunners. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I pulled in the parking lot and uh, something was sitting a little higher. <laughs> Hi, yo. Hey, yo. Anyway, all right. I think with that, Clay, thank you so much. You're busy, and thank you for prioritizing this in your schedule. Yeah, and giving us some insight. Yeah, yeah. thank you guys for having me. Appreciate you are it. by far one of the most talented photographers I've ever met and worked with, and you're from a personality standpoint, you are one of the coolest guys I know. So, oh, so if you've got a product yeah. and, a, and a budget, uh, a hearty budget, yeah, and check out the... <laughs> Clay at ClayGoswick.com. There you we go. <laughs> you have some definition or you're willing to answer the questions of what you want. Yeah, know what you want first and hit Clay up. There we go. I appreciate uh, it, guys. Thanks well, for having me. Let's go. Thank you for listening to The Focus Cast. Go to YouTube.com slash The Focus Cast and slap that subscribe button. Head to TheFocusCast.com to share what you want to hear next. Go forth and be focused as boy. Boy. boy.